Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we got a really special piece of hardware to show you. This is a Tink Arms Perun X16. And this gun has actually kind of made a good bit of a wave in the social media realm. I know some of you have seen these things floating around. Uh, I know you all follow Polinair and uh, those, guys, those, those crazy, crazy mofos over there. And uh, they've been showing these things off quite a bit. And uh, I've, I've become quite interested in them. They're very interesting guns. Uh, they do marry several components from a few different famous gun designs, but also uh, kind of carving a unique path forward. Uh, there's a lot of awesome things we're going to talk about, and I'll try to get, you know, kind of quick uh, into the details. Now, these lowers are uh, polymer, but I know what you're thinking. Everybody thinks polymer is super uh, weak uh, in, in, as an AR lower, uh, which is true, but these are very well reinforced in all the areas that matter, and these are made by uh, Kaiser. Now, on this particular lower, they do have to be modified and cut off here in the back in order to accommodate this upper on the X16. Uh, I'm going to show you why. Here in a moment but um you know it's not just a stock ar lower however everything else is exactly the same as you would expect on any other uh, ar so your grip compatibility uh, your safety you can drop in any type of uh, magazine release triggers uh, everything of that nature so that you have the ability to pretty much customize that any way you want so that makes this gun appeal very much to the uh, ar aficionado right out the gate now this one has a folding mech on it and a sliding uh, sliding stock that's on here, okay? Um, this one is an SBR because this is a 11 and a half inch barrel. Now in terms of barrel lengths, they offer these in a wide variety of different barrel lengths, all the way from the super shorties on up to, you know, full length rifles. Uh, this is a nice medium of the line. Uh, I, I prefer like maybe around a 14, but I do like the 11 and a half as well. Uh, they're doing these in 300 blackout and in 5.56. The way that the gas system on this uh, gun operates is super unique and super, super cool. All right, they use a superlative arms gas block uh, with a gas tube, but it is a hybrid DI slash piston gun sort of uh, built into one, which is kind of cool. So the gas still bleeds through uh, the gas tube and back into the action, but the difference is, is there is a small piston that those gases actuate against and it literally just moves that much. Now, a similar type of operation can be found in a few other guns that are out there, okay? We think of maybe the G36, maybe the Tavor, but also think about the SKS, right? The difference is the SKS uses one long gas piston that pushes back against an immediate, intermediate tappet. This is the same type of thing, all right? So you still get the smooth functionality of a DI gun and you get to be able to adjust the gas with the superlative arms gas block in the way that you need to. Um, but it also just keeps all the crap out of the actions. You don't have the, the gun basically taking a poop in its mouth like the AR does. So it does correct that one minor shortcoming with the AR. Now the AR-15 has fared quite well over the years to be fair. Uh, it, it has done well. Uh, but you can see the way this bolt's designed is, is pretty unique. Um, you've seen some other designs I'm sure that use dual recoil rods and that's to keep the bolt from moving and flexing when it's in travel right there's a couple of cuts here on the bolt that interface into the upper on these rails so it, it, it keeps it nice and straight but also this this uh, rigid rod that runs right here also helps keep the bolt straight and keep it from wiggling around and stuff like that but it's also worth noting that the bolt mechanism uses standard AR-15 bolt extractor firing pin and all that. So they try to keep as much of this thing AR uh, specific as they could so that you could replace extractors, bolts, firing pins, your lower parts, whatever you might need and uh, keep the guns running on your own without having a lot of specialized components. Although obviously there are some specialized components in this gun. I think that what they did to fix this thing up certainly merits uh, you know, the, the need for that. And the reason that, I, that I'll mention that is because the way the upper is designed. Okay, so the upper is a monolithic style upper that is very, very rigid. So that helps with accuracy and that helps with free, free floating your barrel and everything like that. So if you load this thing up on a tripod or on a barrier or something, you don't have to worry about your zero walking around or any kind of weird accuracy anomalies. You're always gonna get good accuracy. But you notice here, the way they design this upper is kind of cool. This top piece is modular. 
Okay, so this is essentially just a, an extra rail section that can be removed uh, that has the charging handle uh, contained in it with the bolt, right? It is ambidextrous and can be swapped out to either side of the upper. That can be moved around. So let's say that, for instance, we want to do like this 4-inch 300 blackout pistol right here, okay? So this is a 300 blackout pistol. We can see that the rear of the upper has a pick rail on the back. We can run a brace. We can run a stock. We can, we can adjust the height anywhere we want to get the height just right, okay, depending on what type of eye relief on the optic or how high the optic is, if it is a, just a true co-witness or not. Uh, you can totally just, you know, adjust that wherever you need it to be. So we can see this 300 blackout has a suppressor mounted on it, and you can see that this upper uh, rail section actually extends beyond the muzzle and beyond the suppressor, but it doesn't just stop there. You could actually take this upper assembly where the rail is and take it off of the long gun and have it come all the way out to the end of the suppressor if you wanted to. So what that allows you to do is you can actually mount your flashlights or your D-balls or your lasers and things far out, right? And especially with a light, you don't have that halo effect of it shining against a, you know, the edge of a suppressor and throwing a shadow downrange. So that allows you to actually get your light more even with the end of the muzzle. So that's really cool. Now, if we look at the 16 inch uh, 5.56 upper, you can see that now with the standard handguard coming out much further on this, this is a 13 and a half inch uh, handguard. You can see you've got this little intermediate section here as well as a higher rail section here. So that gives you the ability to, maybe you want to mount your, uh, you know, your D-ball or something up here on top and then put your flashlight kind of far forward. Maybe you've got you a nice cloud defense owl or you've got you a little, you know, uh, uh, surefire weapons light like one of the, uh, I think the M640 Scout is one of the lights I use, the, the dual cell Scout. You could get that up kind of far and forward uh, if you wanted to, which would be nice. And of course, you can mount your suppressor on here. Uh, so that does make the system very modular in terms of the way that it can be configured. Uh, now they do offer these as a uh, rifle lower, a pistol lower, and you can order them as an SBR. And right now they're available in 5.56 and 300 blackout and a bunch of different barrel lengths. Here's one with a six and a half inch barrel and 300 blackout. Uh, the one with the can on it we just showed you is a four inch barrel. That's a cute little setup, especially with the pistol brace keeps everything nice and compact and I do like the fact that you can have a folding uh, you know stock or brace on here which is really nice and of course you can see the stock compatibility uh, they make this adapter here that intercepts with the back of their receiver so you can drop a variety of different stock mechanisms on here there's more of a precision style stock here's one of the Magpul stocks so you've got a, a wide variety of different stocks that you can throw on there and braces and things also Let's say you want to rebarrel one of these things into one of those funky, weird AR calibers. Well, you actually can do that because the compatibility with barrels is exactly the same as an AR-15. So the way to think about this particular setup in the X-16 is that it's sort of like an improved AR upper. Uh, the platform, if you're familiar with ARs, you're going to be instantly familiar because really, other than a few differences like the side charge, and the way the bolt comes apart for cleaning and, you know, maybe just the height of the optic compared to AR, um, it's going to pretty much operate and feel just like your, your favorite AR. Uh, I shot the 11 and a half earlier, uh, just loud with, uh, you know, no suppressor or anything. Very smooth recoil impulse. I would say the recoil impulse is very similar to a standard DI gun. Uh, which, you know, I wasn't surprised because it, it, it does start out as DI. Uh, it's really the only difference is where the gas ends up when the bolt actuates. Um, there is a gas bleed off port under the handguard here. So in case there is a little bit of excessive gas, it comes out of a port under the handguard here. It's just a really neat gun design and it's uh, awesome to see them starting to come into the US now. Uh, we will do a full video on this gun once we can get one in to play around with some. And uh, it's just an interesting system. It's not something you see every day. And I think in a world of, you know, like, ARs are kind of, they're awesome guns, don't get me wrong. I, I love the AR-15 uh, because there's so much you can do with them. But what this particular gun does, the, the X-16, this shows how far down the rabbit hole you can really take the AR concept because this takes a lot of things that people maybe have complained about a little bit with the AR and kind of dials it in, in, in a little bit more useful way for modern shooters. Also, when you think about guns like the CZ Bren, 
you know, do leave a few things to be desired in some areas. This gun probably gives you a little bit more flexibility to set up exactly the barrel you want, the trigger you want. Um, the magazine compatibility is excellent, of course, using standard Stanag mags. Um, the mags that he brought with these are the ETSs, the clear mags, and these work really well. I just shot some 300 blackout out of this and 5.56, and it feeds uh, 5.56 and 300 blackout just fine, but um, really cool setup. You know, it's, it's a unique gun. It offers something new, and I think for people that are maybe bored with ARs and want something kind of different and to scratch a very different itch, uh, maybe the Tink Arms Perun X16 is for you. This is a really unique piece of gear. I am liking that polymer lower. Um, at first, I didn't think I was going to dig it too much, but it seems like a nice fit for this because it, it is a hefty gun, but even though it is a little bit heftier than probably your standard AR, it is very very um, balanced, right? When you shoulder it, it's well balanced. So something to consider. Uh, we will have a full video coming out, probably on an 11 and a half like this. Uh, this seems to be the one I keep gravitating to, so this is probably gonna be the one that we're gonna look at doing a uh, video on, but I wanna make this video. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, go down in the comment section below. What do you think about the Perun X16? Do you think this is something that's gonna do well on the American market? Do you think there's a demand for this? Do you think we're just spinning our wheels and we're just trying to reinvent the same mousetrap? Do you think that this is the next mousetrap? Um, you know, the AR lends itself to so much customizability and being able to go in there and really do some things with it. And this is the first time I've seen in quite a while where the AR has truly gotten what I would consider to be a very unique facelift. And uh, I think that's very warranted in today's market with so much uh, standard AR stuff coming out. It seems like every company has an AR now, and that's cool. I mean, I love ARs, just like the next guy, of course, or girl. Uh, but I have to say, this is truly a very unique piece of hardware, and I look forward to doing some more work with it. So uh, a big thanks to all of our Patreon supporters. You guys rock. Thank you so very much for supporting our channel. Go to Ballistic Inc. and pick yourself up a snazzy new t-shirt. That's one way you can support the channel. Uh, many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.